um angiofibroma okay so basically angiofibroma occurs in uh, young males and um uh it is a tumor which is locally invasive it's not exactly malignant but it can invade the surrounding structures uh the origin if we talk about it is originating from the sphenopalatine foramen the foramen that connects the sphenopalatine fossa to the nose okay uh then uh, it is uh, divided into certain stages that is uh, also known as radovski straining uh, um radovski staging and uh, the stage 1 is uh, divided into stage 1a and stage 1b stage 1a is in the uh, cavity of nose stage 1b means uh, any of the sinuses uh, any of the sinuses example maxillary or sphenoid or ethmoid any sinus spread is also known as stage 1b stage 2 means uh, it is gone into the sphenio palatine fossa and stage 2b means it has gone into the uh, pterygo i mean it has completely filled the sphenio palatine fossa and gone up to the orbit now stage 3 you have to remember is anything which is in the cranium that is intracranial spread stage 3a is limited and stage 3b is extensive intracranial spread now talking about the symptoms so basically the patient will uh, have uh, recurrent epistaxis there is nothing to just uh, uh mug up things because uh, this angiofibroma is basically as the name suggests a tumor which is made up of blood vessels the blood vessels do not have a contractile component because of which it bleeds easily and this is one of the reason why biopsy is not taken in the angiofibroma it is contraindicated because once the bleeding starts you cannot stop it and that is why the biopsy is contraindicated in the angiofibroma so talking about the symptoms yes so the patient presents with uh, a young male uh, presents with recurrent epistaxis if you see uh, his face then uh, you can see the typical uh, bulging proptosis of the eyes and uh, the anterior uh, maxillary wall is pushed ahead so that is known as frog faces okay so you can see that now talking about the diagnosis the diagnosis is basically enhanced to ct scan why enhanced because uh, we want to see vessels here and uh, vessels can be seen by injecting some dye in the veins and uh, which spread ultimately to arteries and then finally taking a ct scan so in the ct scan uh, in hand, in a contrast and here ct scan uh, so there would be highly vascular structure behind the maxillary sinus which is pushing the maxillary sinus so this is known as holman miller sign which is one of the very important sign in the uh, ent holman miller sign basically you can see in a ct scan that uh, you can compare with the opposite side that the opposite side which is normal uh, the maxillary sign uh, the maxillary sinus can be seen as a big black cavity on the normal side while on the abnormal side you can see that the black cavity has reduced and an enhancing mass is pushing the uh, black cavity that is maxillary sinus so that is how you can know that this is uh, angiofibroma so management uh, any stage 1 or 2 will be managed by surgical excision and preoperative embolization so what you need to do is what we do is basically the artery supplying uh, the uh angiofibroma which is a maxillary artery is embolized so we in, uh, we embolize the artery so that the bleeding does not occur much during the surgery and then what we do is we excise the tumor now uh, if the stage has reached up to 3 means the tumor has spread intracranially then we will 
prefer not to not to do surgical excision and then we'll be giving radiotherapy so radiotherapy here would be doxorubin plus venpristine and dacarbazine okay so basically what you saw up till here is that you saw um, it uh, it is young male presented with recurrent epistaxis epistaxis and you thought it is angiofibroma you send the patient for um one more thing i wanted to tell you here is that when you see through nasal endoscopy you see a red fleshy mass and polyp you can differentiate that polyp doesn't usually bleed that much so patient will not be having a complain of epistaxis okay so basically the patient came you uh, took a enhanced ct scan you saw holman miller sign and now you think that uh, i want to manage this patient so you know if stage 1 and 2 is there you will do surgical excision if stage 3 is there you will do radiotherapy now basically there are various approaches to excise the uh, tumor transpalatal approach is when we cut the heart palate to enter the nasal cavity the transmaxillary incision in the nasal facial, facial skin is when uh, you give an incision just on the sides of the nose you uh, raise the skin flap and when you, you know that on the sides of nose you have the maxillary sinus so via the maxillary sinus you will approach the tumor then the mid facial blubbing approach is uh we prefer this mid facial blubbing of de blubbing approach in patients who do not want a facial scar so basically what happens is when you uh, give a incision on the sides of the nose the, there is a permanent scar on the face so what we do is uh, just below your uh, just below the upper lips we cut the mucosa from inside so i hope you can imagine that i have raised the upper lip of the patient then you have the mucosa just above the teeth i cut it and by when i go further upwards you know i can reach maxillary sinus and i can also reach the anterior nares that way okay so that is it then the infratemporal approach is also there um now one more sign you need to remember here is crescent sign or do double d sign okay so basically what happens is when you take a lateral x ray uh, you see a mass hanging from nose into the pharynx so how can you know that it is not a parapharyngeal or i'm uh, not i'm sorry not parapharyngeal Uh, how can you know that it is not a retropharyngeal bulge or uh, not a prevertebral bulge so basically you can know it by this sign crescent sign so if it is a para if it if it is a retropharyngeal bulge the enhancing mass will mix with the posterior wall but because it is a polyp which is hanging from the nasopharynx into the pharynx there would be a layer of air in between the polyp and the posterior posterior wall so this air will be seen as a black line in between the white polyp and the white posterior wall so that is the crescent sign fine so basically that was all about the angiofibroma the 